Man, I don't fucking believe it. Motherfucker. And this is where you start saying fuck, fuck, fuck about six fucking hundred times in a fucking row. I got the fucking door panel on. I got the whole fucking door together. I put the fucking door panel in. I got the fucking locks in. I got the fucking door handles and all the other shit. And guess what? I got to take the fucking door panel off. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. took off of there the wind the wind paper that goes behind there I forgot to put that fucker on right here you see that shit I forgot to put the fucker on got the fucking door panel together went over to the other side of the fucking car got it all together and I said whoa 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 hold it right there I need to put the paper in there so now I got to take this fucking door panel apart and we got another fucking problem too that's real easy to fucking miss when I get this door off we're gonna look at it and I'm gonna say fuck one more time all right, if you look right there, you can see we didn't put the paper back on the fucking door. And there's also one other thing I want to check, and what that is, is the exterior lock. When you put those in, there's actually a little pin that sticks out, and then uh, the lock slides around that pin so it'll be raised up and down. And when I put the lock on, I didn't even pay attention to see if it went on that little fucking pin or not. Let's check it and see. All right, if you look at the lock right there, you can see that the little arm did go over the pin, and that's something that you really got to pay attention to because what happens is when you put that lock in there, if it's not lined up properly, then you're going to miss that pin, and then you'll have to do exactly what I just did, take the whole fucking door apart to get to it, take the lock out, line the pin up into the slot, and put it all back together. So at least we got lucky with that situation. Let's get this paper back on there. This is real important to use this fucking paper. This paper is a wind guard. It's also a guard for debris and moisture to get into the car. Let me show you how to install that the easy way so we can get this door panel back on and down the fucking road. Now, what you're going to do to install that paper uh, first of all, let me explain this. If you don't have any paper, go to your local hardware store. Now, we're talking the big guys, the corporation, and buy yourself uh, a small roll of ABS plastic. It's got to be pretty thick, so. And then what you'll do is you will make your own. And um, I have videos on the Internet for that. Go to SWRNC YouTube channel. will show you how to make uh, wind panels for your door out of ABS plastic. Or uh, maybe DIY Auto School, one or the other. I have a video that explains how to do that. But since we have the paper, I'm going to show you how to put that on instead. Now, what I'm using here, this is a spray adhesive. This is a spray adhesive in the can. Uh, you want to go ahead and all around the edges of where you can see the outline of where the old panel was, you want to go ahead and spray that. Keep your spray can close to the uh, panel because you don't want to stand back here and do it. You'll get overspray all over it. So you want to be real close to where you're spraying with the spray can just like you see me do it. And then kind of uh, temporarily go like this in the spots there. And you see what I'm saying? Uh, anywhere that is uh, flush mounted with this panel here, you want to get some glue on it. We don't care about getting glue in this area here because the paper is not going to hit that. But we do want to get glue right here on this edge. And then once that's done, you want to repeat your process on the back side. Now, if you're working with a, uh, uh, the original piece, it's going to be black. Now, if you're doing it like I'm doing it and doing a makeover, and you're not going to buy a bunch of parts to put your car back together, uh, you want to make sure that the black side faces out. All right? The paper side faces in, black side is out. 
And then what I did is I repeated my process. You can see that right here. Uh, I went ahead and I put glue on the outside just like this, okay? You want to let that dry for approximately two minutes. Once that's dry, take your paper just like this, line your holes up. Where the fuck are we at, bitch? There we go. Line your holes up just like this. And then once you have it lined up, just push it on there and it will stick. So the paper is important. If you don't have paper, make a panel out of ABS plastic. And just a real quick run over what you would do is you would cut a sheet of the ABS plastic out a square and you'd go ahead and do what I did with the glue and then of course you would spray some adhesive on the plastic as well, let it sit, stick the whole piece up there and then take a razor blade and trim it out. I like the plastic better due to the fact that it's waterproof and you can see how the uh, cardboard or the uh, thick paper here, it's, it's water stained and, and it's used and abused. Um, doing the aftermarket style, the home style, using plastic to make your, your windshield or wind guard, whatever you want to call it, is a much better and accurate way. And, and that's basically how they do it on brand new cars as well. So let me get this back together and then back in the trunk we go to uh, fucking, uh, yeah. I'm getting delirious on this fucking job. Uh, I'm getting delirious because I want to get it done and, and there's about this much more to do. I'll be back and we'll be splatter painting the trunk when we return. Muscle car makeup. Right here, DIY Auto School, with my friend Pete and nobody else, all by myself. We had hands that have touched this car and hands that have worked on it that gave up in life. Is that what you want to do? You want to be a quitter. Because if you do, you're watching the wrong fucking guy. We'll see you later. doing out there this is Pete over at uh, DIY Auto School and what we are doing we are uh, restoring the trunk of a classic car now this happens to be a car that we've been working on for several months over here it's our muscle car makeover it's a 1969 Chevelle and the owner requested that he would like to have the trunk uh, back looking original with the splatter paint look. I'm sure that anybody that has seen an old classic muscle car or an old car at that will remember the splatter paint that uh, it kind of speckle, all right, speckle looking paint, you know, usually gray with white specks or black with green specks, that type of shit. Now, there used to be a company, uh, it was called Zolotone. Zolotone used to make a product and it was the factory product that they used at the dealer, at the manufacturers. And Zolotone was the number one manufacturer of the trunk spray, splatter spray. Uh, this they're calling this uh, spatter paint. Okay, spatter paint. And then, uh, of course, through the many years of depreciation and the manufacturers not using it anymore, uh, they quit manufacturing it and the manufacturing of the Zolotone is pretty much history and they now um, concentrate on uh, residential commercial type building fucking spray paint bullshit than uh, trunks. Now when Zolotone used to make the trunk liner they would supply it in a cork can, pre-mixed cork can that you can use in your spray gun. Well, this company has obsoleted that product, so don't look for it because you aren't going to find it. And if you do, it's going to be very, very expensive. The only place that I found it was in Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, that was the headquarters for the automotive uh, uh, division 
of Zolo Town, and I believe they said it was $135 a quart. Fuck you. I'm not doing it. The reason that they make that so high is because nobody buys it anymore, and uh, quantities are limited, so if you want it, you got to pay for it. But we found a product that you can buy at your local, uh, your local um, auto parts store, all right, O'Reilly's AutoZone, and I'm not going to give you the name. I don't fucking advertise for the corporation because they don't advertise for me, so fuck you. That's what I'm saying. But I will show you the product, and if you see this can, you can probably get a good gander at it and figure out what it is. And this is a pre-mixed spray can form. This is the gray and the white, all right? Now, when we looked at our trunk, uh, I see that that is gray and white. So we went ahead and got the gray and white uh, spatter paint right here. And I'm sure that's not going to resemble a 100 flawless, perfect fucking color, but it'll be really, really close. Now, I bought a six-pack of these 11-ounce uh, uh, spray cans, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough. That's all they had in stock. Uh, we got a big trunk here to spray, but uh, the real situation is is how to spray it on. This does not go on like regular spray paint out of the can. I'm going to show you how to do it, but uh, this is what you want if you're going to restore your trunk in your classic car, uh, this being a 1969 Chevelle, and then basically any other car from this era that has the spatter, splatter, fucking painted trunk. This is what you're going to use. Now, I want you to pay close attention to how we prepped this off. I went ahead and taped it all the way around the trunk opening. And then once I did that, I went ahead and laid plastic on the car. Uh, this is going to protect our car. It's going to keep us from getting overspray or splatter on our brand new paint job. Um, I'm doing this last due to the fact that uh, I like to do this type of work last, this detail work. Because it, when you're in the process of painting and doing body work and sanding and priming, what happens is the trunk gets all dirty with, you know, all the shit, and then you basically have to do it over again anyway. So we went ahead and cleaned it out using a red Scotch-Brite, scuffed it all down, vacuumed it out, and then we went ahead and blew it out 100%. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and apply our splatter paint, spatter paint, and uh, hopefully it's going to look really nice, and the owner will be happy with it. Okay, so now that it is prepped and ready, what we're going to do is we are going to shake our can up, and you want to make sure that you shake this up very, very well. I don't even hear a ball in there, so you want to make sure that it's shooken up very well. We don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf, and we want to make sure that it is uh, a good application of spray. And then what we're going to do is basically just spray it in there. Now, when you spray it in here, you want to overlap your pattern. You want to chase the dryness out. Uh, don't just randomly start spraying. You want to start up in a corner and then just gradually work your way back. We're going to start over here on this quarter panel over here, and we're going to go this way with it. So let's go ahead and start this and see what happens. Of course, this over here being our quarter panel area, we'll start here and then work our way around as we get over to the right hand side of the car. This would be the left side, we're working to the left, from the left to the right. When you spray this on, you want to hold it back at a generous uh, distance. Do you see how I'm doing that? And it doesn't take a lot to get this in here to make it look good. Just like that, looky there. All right, let's get the corner panel real quick. And you know what, I don't even think I'm going to use three cans on this. This stuff really works good and does a tremendous job and looks really, really nice. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of this the same way and when we come back, we'll have a nice brand new spatter painted trunk that will uh, appreciate what the fuck we're doing to it and the owner will be happy and I will be a happy camper and proud of the work that I'm doing to make this car look like we want it to look. We'll be back when I'm done spraying. Holding your spray can approximately two feet away and overlapping your spray pattern. That's how it's done, right there.
Okay, there you go. We just got that splatter painting our truck. And uh, that's basically what it was. I used three cans, Uno Dos Tres, to do this whole truck. Now, let me explain it to you real square. Um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put a nice even coat on it. You saw that last coat that I was putting on, I was holding it way back here. Now what that's doing, that's letting the fleck in the spatter paint settle in and move around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry overnight and then I'll come back and do a final uh, dust coat and what that dust coat will do, that will make sure that that fleck, that white fleck in the gray is going to stand out and it's going to really, really show nice. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Rhino Liner, Bed Liner. Uh, this stuff that I am putting in this trunk, this was actually the first known bed liner to man. Uh, these trunk liner sprays, these splatter paint sprays, uh, was the first existence of Rhino Liner type material because that's basically what it is. It's a protectant for the trunk so it will not rust and rot out. Um, that might be why one of the reasons the owner wanted me to do this. Another reason is, is that maybe it's factory original and he wanted it to look good as well. So, this is how you do it. This is how it's done. And this is what it looks like, just like factory new, just like it did from the factory uh, 50 years ago. This car has now turned into a beautiful, restored, brand new fucking automobile that you can be proud to say, I fucking did it. All right, splatter paint for the trunk is an easy situation. Splatter paint for the trunk is an item that says, I want to make it look right and do it right and protect my vehicle that I have spent many, many hours restoring and make it look like it's supposed to be and make it act and, and, and preserve, you might call it. Use the word preserve in there, the, the beauty of the fucking automobile that it is. still working on our 69 Chevelle this is a lucky day today this is the day that says you know what we're done with the car we're done with it because we will be done with it we're on the last stages here now what we got is we got the grill now the owner uh, supplied this grill right here this is an NOS factory original General Motors grill but we got a situation with it if you look real close you can see that there is silver paint on the fins of the grill itself. Not here, but inside here. Uh, that's a resemblance that that was for a Malibu. That's a Malibu grill and not a Chevelle grill. Now the Malibu and the Chevelle are basically the same cars. Uh, but here's one difference that would uh, differentiate the Chevelle from the uh, Malibu. The Malibu is more of a cruiser car where the Chevelle would be more of the muscle car hot rod situation. And on the Chevelle, the 69 Chevelle, the grill did not have the silver paint right here. That was blacked out. This was black right here. Just like the bumper filler down there was blacked out. You can see where I painted that uh, flat black or semi-gloss black down there. And that was the Chevelle uh, color code for that. That's, that's what it looked like. So. Naturally, you would take that and go ahead and run it right through the grill to uh, match it all up. So the owner's had this grill for quite a long time. Um, I believe he said that he purchased that grill back in the 80s and he's kept it ever since. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and customize this to a uh, Chevelle grill by going ahead and painting the grill itself, the grill fins you might call them, the, the inserts, whatever, these little things here. We're going to go ahead and paint those black. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tape off the silver part where the chrome goes, which is basically right here, the big parts. We're going to leave those silver because we want to make sure this is color code corrected and, and make sure that customer is happy. And once we tape that off, then we'll go ahead and take a 
uh, high tech, you might say. And when I say high tech, I'm not talking really that high tech, but a spray can paint that is above average use and uh, paint that black to match the fucking Chevelle fucking shit that the fucking owner wants to fucking do. situation that it is. Um, I really didn't have a lot of help on this car. Well, we already know that. And the help that I did have was more of a fucking clown act, help act than it was really help at all. Uh, now I will say that Dylan did a good job. We're talking about 940. And Dylan was actually a good working dude. He had good work ethics when he was working, but uh, when he didn't want to work, he had the ethic of fuck off, I'm not working as well, so, you know, it's all into what the fuck you want to do and how much ethic you want to put into it to really make it all worthwhile. And you know who really lost out on this situation is Dylan and everybody else that worked on this car because they can't say that they had anything to do with it. They can't say, wow, look what I did. They can't get their iPhone out and take a picture of the car and say, I did all that. Because they became the loser of the situation, not the fucking winner. Because when you give up in life, and you don't finish what you start, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit that says every time you start something, there's no sense starting it because you're not going to finish it. You become the lazy ass of the fucking crowd and you become the guy that just is that fucking guy. There's really nothing special about you. Um, once again, I'm actually proud of this car. I'm proud to say I did it. And uh, I believe that it's gonna be a beautiful car when it rolls out of here and the owner is gonna love it. And that is because I took pride in what I did. Kind of like this grill right here. You see how I'm taping it off and I'm taking my time to make sure that I do it right. Make it look the best it can, not just for the owner, but for myself. And then you got the people that you do work the same way that I'm doing on this car, you do their car the same way, and they never can be satisfied. And that depresses you. That brings you down to the gutter more than being the loser that won't finish anything. Because you did finish it and you did put your heart into it, but the fucking guy wasn't appreciative. And that can go with relatives as well. Relatives are the worst uh, example for being unappreciated because they think that they earned it. And that they don't have to be appreciated to anything that you do. And, uh, that's their attitude. 
So I have customers of all walks of life and all attitudes in uh, reality. Because this is not TV and everybody does not leave happy. This is not some bullshit fuck off reality TV show where everything is fake and mumbo jumbo and all made up to make it look like you think you want to see it. This is what you call real. Take the ITY off and that's what I'm talking about. So you'll always have that guy or those guys that ruin it for you, that aren't appreciative and don't give a fuck and there's nothing you can do but go down the road and fucking be happy I guess. I don't fucking like it, but it happens. It happens all the time. Okay, there you go. Uh, now, what we're going to do, the way that I'm going to paint this grill, is I'm going to use spray paint. But I'm not going to use just Krylon spray paint that you buy, because that type of paint is going to last probably six months, a year, and then it'll fade out and the silver will come back. What I'm going to use I am going to use a high quality spray can engine paint. Now the reason I'm using an engine paint is because it's a high temp paint. It's designed to grab and to uh, hold on to whatever you paint a lot longer than just your typical average Krylon or uh, Dupla color type paint. So when you're doing automotive work and you're spraying something with automotive uh, related situations, you should always try to use automotive paint such as engine paint. Now I believe that this engine paint right here is uh, um, the semi-gloss. We're going to go ahead and spray it and see. But uh, this is a, a, a high build ceramic coating uh, engine enamel and it says here that uh, is dyno tested for heat. Wow! Ain't that fucking great. A dyno tested spray can paint in the can. Huh. How do you like how these corporations use big words and, uh, 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 you know, uh, what do we call that, uh, uh, sales tactics of using words together to make it sound like it's some big fucking situation? Why can't they just say high temp engine paint? Why can't they just say that? So we're going to shake our can up really, really good. You want to make sure that that spray paint is mixed thoroughly 100%. When you're spraying, you want to just lightly coat it, just like you see me doing here. Alright, this is going to take several coats of paint to paint that plastic. We're not going to do it in one coat. Alright, we're just going to paint it like this, we're going to let it dry, and then we will come back and paint three, two to three more coats on it after we do this coat. This is how you do it, this is what you want to do. This is the way that you're saying to yourself, hey, it's going to be a Chevelle now. Not a fucking Malibu. Fuck the Malibu. The Malibu's the cruiser. The Chevelle's the hot rod muscle car. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. That's what we're getting at. Always hold your spray can away from it at least this far. You see what I'm doing there? At least that far away. Alright? And just move it fast. Just like I'm doing. You want to put light coats on there? You don't want to... Uh, Overpaint it using a very thick coat. You just want to blend it in and keep on going. You want to chase the dry out. Now on this here, we're not worried about chasing any dryness out. We're worried about coverage. Make sure you get everywhere. And then once that dries, I'll come back, I'll repeat my process. And until I'm satisfied with what I'm looking at and then go down the road. Um, let's go look at the hood and the deck lid. We got that painted. Many of the body shop girls on our way down here. We're going to color sand and buff that, get that hung on. And once that's done, we get the grill on. And then all we got to do is basically detail the fucking thing out. It's ready to roll. It's ready to go. And it's down the road that says, hey, my friend Pete did his fucking job. And, and, and it came out beautiful. So there's our hood right there. We got the hood painted. We got the deck lid painted inside and out. 
Um, if we look at the hood right here, I taped that off meticulously because that's painted black on the inside. It's going to look beautiful when you open the hood up and you see that nice brand new black paint. I got the edges painted perfect, just uh, correct to the factory right here. Uh, I rolled the tape around the back side and then I painted all the outside lip. All right, So that would be blue. The deck lid came out really, really nice. It's going to take minimal color sand and buffing on this uh, dog. All we gotta do is get some of that orange peel out and be down the fucking road. And I might mention that this, um, this tool that you're looking at, this is called a parts tree, is a very, very, very well invested piece of equipment. Um, if I didn't have that, I would be hanging the deck lid up on the wire over there. Where's our wire at? There it is. All right, I'd be hanging it up on our wire and then it would be swinging from that and then I'd be painting the hood on a stand so this tool right here this parts hanger fucking tree tool is a very very well invested fucking piece of equipment that uh, anybody that does work like my friend Pete does and that would be by himself uh, would be wise to fucking get one of those it's well worth the money. So there it is right there. The Chevelle is all together except for the hood and the deck lid and of course the grill. And uh, it's ready to go home. Look at the detail as I walk up to it. Look at the detail in the inch compartment with the fenders painted blue the way I painted them. We got the gray hinges that uh, the owner says was factory, which we did find out after we cleaned the hinges off, they were factory. I went ahead and uh, touched up and painted the, uh, the front radiator support. So when the hood is opened, it looks brand new. We'll go ahead and touch up the tops of the horns, make sure those are nice and clean and detailed. And then I also went ahead and painted the front of the cowling in, be, in front of this rubber right here to make that look nice when the hood's open. I mean, it, just doing that right there made the engine compartment look totally different. So, yeah. Detail is the key to a muscle car makeover. Detail, it's the small little detail things that the eye really doesn't catch, but the brain does. I went ahead and uh, left this just like it was because this was factory, this flat, flat black here. This is a factory situation. And then if you look over there at that fender, as we zoom in, you can see how the paint would blend into the black. We went ahead and basically tried to manipulate that so it will have that color correct fucking muscle car makeover situation. Um, we still got to put the chrome on here and then of course on the hood so that'll be the last thing that we do. We went ahead and did the trunk. Remember the trunk? We uh, painted the trunk. It came out beautiful. We used the spatter paint in the can. Worked very very well. I ended up using four cans. I'm going to give the owner a can and then I will take the other can that I have back. I bought six of them. I ended up using four. Look at the detail of the trunk line. The trunk line detail where the rubber is, uh, everything is painted perfect and looks immaculate. So that is the key to the muscle car makeover. If you can figure out how to put the key into the lock and turn your brain on, then the detail will be there and it will sell you that is what to do. This has been a long, extensive muscle car makeover video set. And I'm proud that I did this car. Um, I did it to make money, of course I did, because that's what I do for a living, and I need money to survive. But the real situation is, is you got to take pride, and you got to have pride in the work you do. If it takes two years to finish the project, like our Mustang right here, it doesn't matter. Because once the car is done, it's done right. All right, you didn't slop it together. You didn't throw it together. You didn't do an Earl Shops paint job. You didn't paint it out in your fucking driveway. You didn't pay somebody $200 to do it for you. All right, you wanted it done professionally. You wanted the detail to be there. And you wanted the uh, imma immaculaticity of saying, I am proud of what I fucking own there. So if it takes a long time, like the Mustang right here, the 69 Mach 1, all right, uh, which has turned into a not domino effect, but a fucking nightmare because every time I turn the corner on this thing, I find something new that needs done. All right, it's a, it's a, it's what you call a uh, done corner, do it again, t 
turnaround situation. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's the detail. When you're doing body work, when you're doing bondo, all right, bondo work is detail work. Uh, you know, putting your uh, epoxy primer on, it's a detail work, it's detail. Always remember that word detail, because the word detail, once you get that in registered in your brain, and, and, and you finally figure out what the fuck detail is actually means, that is when you're gonna do it right, all right? Let me detail this fucking grill out and get that bitch done so we can get it mounted on the fucking car. And uh, if I look at it, uh, I believe I got the wrong paint on there. I got glossy paint. We, we can't use glossy. It's got to be fucking uh, flat. It's got to be flat. So that means I have to go to the store, get me some uh, high temp flat engine paint black and paint it black. That, that won't work. High gloss won't work because that's not color correct. Flat is color correct. So let me let you go at that. We'll be back as my friend Pete finishes up on the Chevelle and gets it down the road to the owner and says, shake the hand, make the friend. I did a beautiful job for you. Now pay me, motherfucker. Well, it's true. I do need to get paid. I do need to get my paycheck. We'll be back when we're done with the 69 Chevelle as we do a thorough walkover of what the fuck we did. Southwest Rod and Custom. That's Bruno. And we're always here. Right? So take it easy. Have fun. And enjoy what you're doing. See you later. Adios, amigos.